Good evening. The Lord be with you. Uh, the feast of Saint Simon's, or Saints Simon and Jude, uh, tra uh, apostles transferred from this coming Sunday, or no, coming Friday, the 28th of October. The order of service is divine service setting three, spoken. And we begin with our opening hymn, God is Spoken by the Prophets, Lutheran Service Book 583. the wrong him in the machine. So this one is uh, 586 is what I have. 586.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face who exalt in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, Art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you chose your servants Simon and Jude to be numbered among the glorious company of the apostles. As they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so may we with ardent devotion, make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament for the Feast of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles transferred is the prophet Jeremiah, the 26th chapter. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of jo Josiah, the king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord, 
all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen, and every one turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking, all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people. Then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate within your, without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in, the tr for in truth the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is written in St. Peter's first letter to the church, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's great power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you, have not been, or, though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not now see Him, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. 
No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. If, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Praise to you, you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, or the, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. So writes St. Paul by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It seems that the Holy Spirit forgot to mention that they also need to be crazy and out of their minds. Jesus said, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Who would ever willingly pick, pick up such a cross? Who would ever desire such a noble task? The answer is no one. After hearing the requirements of, of the task, I certainly did not want to do it. To this day, my flesh still rebe rebels against this noble task. Who really wants to be persecuted? No one. It is one of those things that never, that never comes naturally. All men who become pastors never stop kicking against the goads, as it were. No man can willingly desire the noble task. No, they must be called. Now, there was no mysterious ringing of a phone booth uh, as I walked down the street one day, and when I answered it, I found God on the other end. No, I wish it were so explicit. No, the call is hidden. It started with God's name and a splash of water, and then it continued. It continued through the hearing of God's word regularly. Then somewhere along the way, the thought crossed my mind, and from there, it snowballed. Before I knew it, I was in college taking Greek and applying to seminary. Now, now I find myself in this pulpit serving you. Today, I'm here preaching God's holy word to you. Wonder of wonders, it takes the Holy Spirit and his word to keep me here, to keep me from running off out the door to join the circus as a lion wrangler. Sometimes the idea of sticking my head into the mouth of a lion seems more pleasant than enduring the abuse of the ennoble task. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. So here I stay. The Holy Spirit plants the desire in every man's heart, every man who assumes the noble task. It doesn't happen through voices in one's head. It comes by way of the one voice of God, His Holy Word. Through the Word of God spoken by countless men whom God has called by the very same gospel they preach, one man after another is called, called into the holy office of pastor, the office that comes with blood, bruises, and nails. Why does God continue such senselessness, sending men into such a battle? That is the wrong question, because there is no real answer given in Holy Writ. The better question is, what are the benefits of such things? Look at Jeremiah. He is given the word of God to speak against the people, and they nearly killed him. Look at Simon and Jude. They were called by Jesus to be his apostles, and as a result, they followed him to the grave. But for what? They did it that the gospel would be preached. That the gospel would be preached and be received by those who would hear it. And maybe by the Holy Spirit's work, some may believe what they say and be saved. Those who bear the burden of preaching and teaching the gospel know the value of the goods of which they have been given to dispense. They know the value because they live from it themselves. For Jeremiah, the benefit was seen. His life was spared. But for many, the fruits are not seen. And the fruits are born and picked by others. But in the end, the fruits are born nonetheless.
The gospel is not just a story or a history. It is that, but it's so much more. The gospel is life. It is life to all who hear and believe it. It is life because it forgives sinners their sins. It forgives all those fleshly, worldly men who long to abandon the noble task. It gives strength to endure, to endure whatever may befall them, because they believe that in Jesus there is a life far better than in the circus. In that faith, there is nothing that would stand in their way, nothing that the world could do that would prevent them from proclaiming the life of the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. No threat of blood or bruises, not even nails. It is a matter of the gospel. It is a matter of the gospel that men endure such disrespect, humiliation, and hatred. The faithful will do whatever is necessary to keep the good news of Jesus Christ pure and to give Jesus and his forgiveness to those who need it, even if it means death. The unbeliever would not and could not silence the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it were not for the faithful men like Jeremiah, Simon, and Jude, and countless others who preached the gospel to those who liked it or liked it not, you would not be a Christian here today. For the Holy Spirit would have no gospel by which to call you. But by God's grace, by His wisdom, preachers have been sent. And the Word has been planted in your ears and into your hearts. The forgiveness of sins has been given. And with it, life and salvation. And so you sit here this evening forgiven restored, a member of the household of faith, all because of those who have gone before you, who have preached, who have, been, who have spilt their blood following their Lord to the grave. They followed their Lord to the grave knowing that their Lord did not stay in the grave himself, and neither will they, neither will you. This is your comfort and peace as it was theirs. Thanks be to God that you have His living voice among you this day and a pastor through whom it is spoken. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, you desire everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Grant that by the preaching of your gospel, we may be given the wisdom that leads to salvation. By the working of your Holy Spirit, keep us attentive to all the teachings of your word. Enlighten our minds, control our wills, and purify our affections. Let your word be a light for our path, that neither the pleasures, nor the honors, nor the pains of this life may turn away our thoughts from the fullness of life that is found only in you. Enable us, in sincerity of heart, to follow you, the only true God. By your holy word, enlighten all who are in error, doubt, or temptation, with the sure and certain knowledge of your truth, that all who live in sin may be led to repentance. Show mercy and grace to all those suffering any distress, to those who are sick or hospitalized, and to those facing death. Let them know the sure comfort of your holy word. We commit ourselves and all for whom we pray to your fatherly care and benediction. Be gracious to us and defend us by your power. Direct us by your spirit that we may daily grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior until we shall stand before you in the joy of everlasting glory. 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for you have mightily governed and protected your holy church, in which the blessed apostles and evangelists proclaimed your divine and saving gospel. Therefore, with patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists, with your servants, St. Simon and St. Jude, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Christ, Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ.
price check for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and life to come. We fire in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.